What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So in this video we're talking about clone fragrances. We talked about cheap fragrances yesterday. Today it's clones, the Middle Eastern affordable stuff that has kind of been taking the online fragrance community by storm in 2023. And over the year I've accumulated quite a few and more than one of these I've gotten in the previous year. But these are just so good to my personal taste that I felt like I it was my duty to compile a list of what I think are 10 of the absolute best when it comes to clones. So let's talk about them. Stay tuned. Starting with one that I have an even more profound respect for having been able to experience the original at this point. The original is YSL Baby Cat. So this is from Paris Corner. This is called Emir Rifakat. This is a beautiful, rich vanilla cedar wood base with a lot of pink pepper, black pepper, and incense. Beautiful stuff. Now, it's not on the quality tier level of YSL Baby Cat, but it's pretty good for what it is. I gotta say the quality here is pretty good. It's nothing to you know, dismiss and say, oh, cheap and synthetic. It's not a huge gap, but it's a noticeable gap in quality. But that's also 300 to $400, and you can get this for around 40 There's a big difference. But this smells so intoxicating, so good. This is one of my favorite clone pickups of 2023. It's going to be in that video, too, which I haven't recorded yet. But, oh, my God, if... I was giving it my stamp of approval 9 out of 10 kind of stuff prior to being able to smell Baby Cat. Now that I have a few ml of Baby Cat, don't get me wrong, that's a masterpiece, I think. But as far as clones, pretty accurate, spot on for the most part. Gets close enough in quality, performance is fantastic, and then it's perfectly unisex. This is one that your whole household can enjoy. So, first one we're talking about here, clone of YSL Baby Cat. It's called Paris Corners Emir Refuckit. Something else I've been pretty impressed by over the past year is Fragrance World's designer clones. I know for some it's a little strange to clone designers because most of the time from discounters, not really all that expensive, but sometimes it just makes sense. And with Essencia Le Homme Le Parfum, it just made sense to me. So this is a clone of Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Mal Le Parfum, most people's favorite version of Le Mal. It's warm and spicy, rich, super powdery iris, that designer type of just powder bomb kind of iris. Warm, spicy, powdery, and ambery is how you can look at this one. <sighs> With that lavender, a little hint of minty freshness, even though I don't remember that being in the notes, but it, you smell Lamal's DNA, that lavender mint kind of smell with some sweetness. There's tonka bean and iris that makes it very sweet, powdery, fluffy, and floral out in the air. Now, maybe not for everyone, but for those of you that like powdery fragrances, this is one of the best out there, at least the original that it's cloning, and Fragrance World did a great job. I think when it comes to just, if I was to spray them side by side and not tell you which is which, I think it'd be pretty hard for you to tell me which one's the 30 some odd dollar fragrance and which one's the original designer. It's that good. It smells great. It actually will extend the light of life of the original. Not that the original's super expensive. I get it. You get a 4.2 for around 80 or 90 bucks from discounters online. You can get this for around 30, and you'll be totally fine with it. It's like a third of the price. Pretty spot on. Performs about the same. I've even done a full review on this one. Big fan. It's a clone of Lamal Le Parfum. It's called Essencia Le Homme Le Parfum. Now, in my opinion, this is kind of a hybrid of two fragrances. I feel like you get elements of both Aventus and Hachivat from Nishane. This is Afnan's Supremacy Not Only Intense. I've been talking about this one a good bit lately. I've worn it a few times recently. I really love this fragrance. It's just so good. Black Currant Bomb, dark, tart, fruity, a little inky with a robust amount. I mean, it's, it's thick, it's robust, it's hefty. Oak moss, earthy, spiced, smoky little woodsy but it's mostly black I mean there's pineapple there's bergamot you get some other fruits and stuff but it's mostly black currant and oak moss is the main takeaways from this performance is stellar for me every time I talk about it I have somebody come and talk about my bottles from this year my bottles that year my bottles this well my bottle performs great 
It's an absolute monster performer. I don't spray it more than four times because it can be very overwhelming beyond that for me personally. Um, so everybody's going to have a different experience, but this is a phenomenal fragrance that you can argue is a clone of Aventus. You can argue is more of a clone of Hachivat. But the thing that I don't think is really up for debate is that you're going to get elements of both here. And I think the dominance of... You're going to get the fruitiness and a little smoky tone of Aventus, and you're clearly going to get the overwhelming oak moss side of Hachivat. That's why I kind of consider it a hybrid kind of clone, if you will. But there's an argument either way. But for me, great option, absolutely worth checking out. It's Afnan Supremacy, not only Intense. Now here's another one from Afnan that's kind of a hybrid between the two versions at the recording of this that are available on the market. We're talking about Tom Ford's Ombre Leather and Tom Ford's Ombre Leather Parfum. This is Afnan Rare Carbon. This has a little bit of that kind of floral hit. You get more of a violet leaf smell. You get a little bit of the orris smell from the Parfum. So you have the freshness and that floral hit with the in-your-face bright leather smell of both versions with a little bit of sweetness from regular ombre leather eau de parfum, not the parfum, because the parfum is not quite as sweet. You get the, the violet leaf and the florals from the other side. It's really, really good. To be honest with you, this has stopped me from getting full bottles of both of those. I've had decants of both of those, and I have a bunch of niche fragrances that are kind of in the realm of Tuscan leather. Like, I have many ways of smelling like the scent profile, but for the 35-ish dollars you can pay for this, I mean, it's really all you need. You don't really need ombre leather if you have this, and it's really prolonged me getting bottles of those, and I will eventually. I want to have them. I love the scent profile, but I really appreciate what Afnan did here. The quality is actually pretty good. Decent quality oils. Doesn't smell super cheap and synthetic. Performance is really good. There's enough freshness here where it adds some extra versatility, so you don't have to strictly wear this in cooler weather like the fall and the winter. I think spring and certain instances in the summer you can get away with this one if you like bright, fresh leather. Really good stuff, I have to say. It's Afnan Rare Carbon. Now, this is a newcomer this year. Uh, this is a fragrance brand owned by FragranceBuy.ca. It's called Fomo Parfums. I now have all three at the recording of this that are available. All three are really good, but the cream of the crop is definitely Gary's Den, Le Parfum. This is their clone of Diorome Parfum. So the trade-off here is it's not quite as dark and animalic as Diorome Parfum. It is, however, much spicier. There's cardamom here that really stands out. Cardamom and coriander add this nice cooking spice feel to a very waxy, powdery iris smell with some leather, a little bit of soft woods. Uh, it's not, like I said, not quite animalic like the oud smell that you get from regular Diorome Parfum. Get a little bit of citrus here, but a beautiful scent that gets about 80% accurate with its little bit of twist. Like I was saying, it's not dark and animalic like that one, Still has the leathery facet, and it's more spicy. Performance is great. At least on me, performance is great. This is absolutely phenomenal for like the 29 bucks it goes for. It's kind of a must-grab if you're looking for a phenomenal option to replace the high-priced Diorome Parfum. Is it as good as getting Diorome Parfum? No, but it's pretty close. It is pretty close. I would say when it comes to clones, this is one that... I think I'd be fine with this if I couldn't source Dior Homme Parfum for a decent price. Now, I have two bottles of the 75ml version that discontinued in 2019, so I'm good on the original, but I sure as hell enjoy this one, appreciate it, and think it's phenomenal. For $29, worth checking out, in my opinion. And it's Formal Parfums, Gary's Den. One of Latafa's releases in early 2023 really kind of shook the space for a little while. It had some serious hype when it first released and totally justified. It's a slightly more spicy take on Parfums de Marley Sedley. This is Latafa's Mahir Legacy Silver. Fingerprint magnet, highly reflective, has the horse head cap that's like a weapon, very heavy stuff, but you get the mintiness, the citrus, the ambroxan, the aromatics, the slight soapy tone. It's it's all there. It smells. It's unmistakable. It's Sedley. Just a little bit spicier than Sedley. Performance is really good. The quality here is decent. It's not super cheap and synthetic smelling, but also not, I mean, Sedley's not the highest quality smelling fragrance. It's got synthetics like Ambroxan in it, 
Uh, but I think this gets really close for the money. This, had, like I said, had some serious hype when it released at the beginning of 2023. This is such a great fragrance from them. Uh, I think they did a great job. They've had a few really, really good releases in 2023. But when it comes to clone accuracy, I think they nailed it about as good as it can get. Um, tone down the spice just a hair, and I think it'd be pretty much spot on perfect. But I actually appreciate the intensified spiciness that it has over the original. Kind of gives it a little bit more character in some ways, if you will, because I like spicy fragrances. What can I say? But pretty damn accurate to Sedley. Latafa Mahir Legacy Silver. Now, this is one that I've had for a while. I sing its praises from time to time. My wife's a big fan. I'm a big fan. There's a ton of fragrances out there that clone Silver Mountain Water from Creed. And there's several of them that smell of higher quality than this. But there's just something so attractive of Club de Nuit Siage from Armoff. For me, for my wife, just out in the air. It's magic. It's a phenomenal performer on my skin. It's got all that beautiful, musky, fresh, metallic citrus smell. You get a little bit of that herbal green feel of the T-note. Oh, it's just so good. I love smelling this one. Now look up close, sniffing it like this. It smells super cheap and synthetic. It really does. I'm not going to act like it doesn't. But out in the air. Magic. Magic. Captivating. Smells so good. Compliment getter. Totally that. Up close and personal, your girl sniffs your neck. Might be how it is when you sniff your hand up close or your arm up close. It's going to smell cheap and synthetic. At least that's been my experience. My wife agrees. But this is also one of her favorite fragrances for me to wear because it's cloning one of her favorite DNAs of all time, the Silver Mountain Water DNA. So, like I said before, there's other versions that are a higher quality smell, like uh, Supremacy in Heaven from Afnan, for example. That's the first one that comes to mind. The oil quality is a little bit better there but I feel like this is a little bit more magical smelling, and it's a monster performer in my experience. Definitely worth checking out. One of Armoff's best, in my opinion, is Club de Nuit Siage. We're going back with Fragrance World for this one, and it's so enjoyable. It's a clone of one of my favorite DNAs and my favorite version of the DNA, Y Le Parfum. So this is called Fragrance World's F Le Parfum. So the thing that gives this a nod is I wear this more than the original. I keep telling myself because it's an easier reach where it's out on the shelf because it's literally right, the spot it goes on is like right there. Whereas my Y fragrances are over here to the side, go around the back of the couch kind of thing to get to them. Not that difficult to take a few more steps. I get it. But I don't know. I think it's just because it's so accurate. It's a little tiny bit spicier. Just a smidge. I do notice a difference here and a little creamier in the dry down. Slight nuance difference out in the air. You're not going to tell me a difference because it's cloning a relatively synthetic fragrance in the first place. But the beautiful aldehydes, citrus, all of that's there. The crisp ginger, it's intensified a little bit here. Like I said, a little bit spicier. Fresh, spicy, aromatic, clean and musky. I just love this fragrance. If I was to recommend one fragrance world fragrance for you to try, and it's just because it's my taste, it would be F Le Parfum because I love Y Le Parfum. I think it's the best one they've ever put out. And this nails it. So good, and it's similar performance. I mean, it's just, it's pretty much like they poured Y Le Parfum in this bottle. So yeah, I'm, it might even be in the thumbnail. I don't know, I didn't make the thumbnail yet. Try this. For 30 bucks, it's cheaper, and it's the same fragrance. I, I, I don't know what to say. It's the same fragrance. To me, anyways. Clone of Y Le Parfum. It's Fragrance World's F Le Parfum. Now, when it comes to this one from Paris Corner, I actually like it more than the original. I've had a decant of Byredo's Bal de Freak before. Some people love that fragrance, and I've always thought it was nice, but there's a little bit of a twist here, I think, that makes me like this more. It smells like Sprite. It's Paris Corner's Vibrant. Vetiver Delight. It smells like the color of this bottle. Lemon Lime Soda. Even though it's bergamot, not lime, it still smells like lemon lime soda. There's a little bit of zest to kind of mimic carbonation. Fresh green, soft woody, it's not an earthy vetiver. Makes me happy. <sighs> Makes me so happy to smell it. Solid performer too, six to eight hour range and longevity on my skin. I'm sure there's somebody out there that quote, 30 minutes and it's gone, bro. I see it on every fragrance I talk about. It's Anyway, I get really good performance out of this, especially for being as fresh as it is. Pretty much every time I get at least six hours. Um, sometimes I get in the seven to eight hour range. I've had it go as low as five. It depends on the setting. How hot is it outside? Am I just lounging around wearing it out the shower? 
whatever have you. But point being, if you want just a very happy, uplifting, vibrant scent profile, it's named appropriately. It is absolutely a delight too. They named this one right. I would strongly encourage you to check this one out. Clone of Byredo's Balda Freak. This is Paris Corner's Vibrant Vetiver Delight. We've got one more from Paris Corner. It's the newest pickup that I've gotten. Uh, this was sent to me by Aroma Concepts recently. It's a clone of Kaoli's Yum Pistachio Gelato. This is Care Pistachio. I was told by a gentleman that the H is supposed to be silent, so Care Pistachio, I believe is how it's pronounced. This is a fun one. Performs great. It's actually surprisingly fresh. So when you see the notes, you got whipped cream, cotton candy, um, pistachio gelato accord. You have all this creamy, sweet, fluffy type. It's got a fluffiness to it. It really does. The florals kind of add this minty freshness from some geranium mixed with this gelato ice cream. I mean, uh, pistachio ice cream, pistachio ice cream, pistachio gelato, tomato, tomato when, in a, when it's in a fragrance, tomato, tomato. But it smells the same, but it smells delicious, but not completely gourmand. And that's why I like it, because the florals come in a bit more, and it's fresher than that note breakdown will lead you to believe this is great. Sure, it leans a little feminine, but I think anybody can enjoy this one. It's such a good fragrance that I think, and that cinnamon, there's a sweet rum. You get it. There's so much going on here. You, when, if and when you see the note breakdown, Looks busy, and you do get quite a bit of nuance. I think Paris Corner did a phenomenal job with this one. I'm not saying I saved the best for last, because Gary's Den probably would have been, but I really, really like this. This is a recent love affair fragrance for me, if you will, because it just smells so inviting while being a little delicious without just smelling like dessert, because I'm not a big gourmand guy, but sometimes I'm in the mood for it. This offers just enough elements of that with enough florals, mint, freshness, spice, and even a little hit of booze. It's a very impressive fragrance to me. I really love it, and I would encourage you to give it a try. It's Paris Corners Care Pistachio Clone of K. Ali's Yum Pistachio Gelato. Well, that's the 10. And until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. Because I do appreciate all the feedback and I love hearing from you guys. Have you tried any of these? Definitely sound off below. What do you think about them? I'm sure I'll see somebody talking about awful performance on something. And then other people will contradict what they're saying with your crazy, I get crazy performance. Because it, it, everybody's experience is different. That's the reality of it. Olfactor perception, skin chemistry. We are the variable, not really the fragrance. It's us, our skin, and our nose is the deciding factors on how that stuff shakes out. But one thing that's kind of undeniable, even though it's still an opinion, I think all these smell really, really good and pretty accurate to what they're cloning. And until next time, I will say, if you get your hands on any of these 10 and you give them a spray now, you might end up thanking me later. Have a good one, guys.